talking to a man from Rome, Father Tarme. Yeah, I happened to meet him here a few minutes ago, walked into church after being down the road at the anniversary of the signing of the treaty in 94, where the Native American folks were celebrating that and still working on peace between the peoples. So, uh, like a man right here had the misfortune to run across me and now he's going to be inundated with stories and poetry. You can see he's enjoying the suffering of it. Ah, we ah, just shared the ah, poem which ah. he enjoyed. So, he, do you mind if I kick that poem to you again? No, not at all. Okay, this one is The Word Made Yes. Conceived in the heart of Mary, Buddha of Buddha-ness. To say impossible is to put limits on unlimitedness. Instead of resisting with all her might, she said yes, in scared delight. Something too long for. Uh, I'm going to bring in a mention of our good buddy Patrick Payton, the rosary priest. I'm sure you're familiar with him. Oh, yes, from Albany. And uh, he said that, um, you know, this is going back in the days, Payton, he was from Mayo, God help us. You, you don't know about him. He was back, he had the rosary on the radio. Mm -hmm. He used to have Bing Crosby and all those yes. folks come on there. Right, right. He was originally from Mayo. Nothing against Albany. Nobody moved to Albany. No, he moved to Albany. I think so, yeah. Okay, that could be. That could yeah. be. But I know originally from Mayo. From the Albany Diocese, I believe. All right. And he said, uh, and he had sound footing, well grounded. He said, the church and state are here to serve the family. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, that's sound political philosophy as well as uh, good uh, metaphysics and sound theology. We don't have that today. What do you think yourself? The election just happened. Do you think we had any of that in this last election? No. no. And the biggest, the saddest part is that a lot of the preaching that I heard myself, folks are really confused in the issue. So I was going to tell you a story about a poet from the old sod, Paddy Drury. Paddy, a farm laborer, and he was working this was early 1900s at a time when in the Roman Catholic island I grew up in, that priest used to come in to the village, two of them, and would stay a week or two weeks depending, and you would have the men one time, the women in a few days, and then the last night of the mission you would have reconciliation, confession. And so this man, the farm laborer, was working for this woman, and she was a pious woman, and she, Patty was not known to go to church. I explained that to our friend right here before. And he was one of the two people in the whole of North Kerry that didn't go. One was a Protestant, and Patty was the Catholic, and they were well known for it. Had their own religion, was said. So anyway, Patty working for this woman, and she was dying to get him to go and be reconciled with the church. Oh, by heavens, the last night, didn't she look across and didn't she see Paddy in the men's short house of the church? And she couldn't wait till the next day, next morning at breakfast when he was be there for work to ask him what he thought of it. So, fair enough, she had the kindness to wait till he had his feed, his breakfast, and she was pouring the second cup of tea and she said to him, Well, Paddy, and what did you think of our two good holy fathers last night? And Paddy said, Missus, I only had a half a day schooling. But if I had the other half, I'd beat the two of them blind. And that was Patty. That was passed down to me by an uncle of mine, and who a man has had an ear for the word. So speaking of that, I, do you have good preachers and bad preachers? And the good preachers are the ones who know how to bring home the word. And this man right here is obviously a very patient man because he's been listening to me. He just met me, and I've been talking away, and he's smiling through it. So now, you turn. What do you think of that story? Oh, I think it's wonderful. <laughs> Good man yourself. Good man. All right. Here's, here, here's what I tweeted after the last election. Yeah. Word polluter in chief Obama re-elected. Wannabe word polluter in chief Romney rejected, dejected. <laughs> Most <laughs> folks still love their false prophets. Mm -hmm. And that's what we had.
Mm -hmm. Saturday's gospel was about you can serve God and serve mammon. This country right here, we have people talking about taking food. Now, these are Catholics, supposedly, and mm -hmm. evangelists, right? Talking about taking food out of children's mouths mm -hmm. by cutting food stamps. I guess if the secular part of the government feeds the hungry, then there's something wrong in the eyes of some people because they don't have the proper credentials and they're secular liberals. And we can't have secular liberals being good neighbors feeding the hungry. And if we have to have Paul Ryan and Romney coming out and saying, it's better for people to do without food stamps and be hungry. Mm. Now, don't you think that's antichrist when you're taking food out of children's mouths? Yes, well, definitely, definitely, ah, definitely. I picked the right man to talk to. <laughs> I heard on EWTN, this EWTN, this guy, um, let me keep you on here now. What's his name? Raymond Dario, the world over. Oh, yes. And he said, he had a guest down there that said, Paul Ryan is the intelligent face of American Catholicism. Beautiful, nice, nice. Do you like that? Yeah. It made me puke to think of that guy being the face of American Catholicism. Paul Ryan, you don't Paul like Ryan. him? I just said to you, the man is taking food out of children's mouths. You believe you that? Ind food stamps. Have you ever been on food stamps? Do you know yeah. what it means to have food stamps? Oh, yes. You do know. You've been oh, on food stamps. Well, no, I haven't personally, but many of my people are, yeah. Okay. We have a big food pantry, you know? All right. Then how can you defend a man like Paul Ryan who's taking uh, food out of children's mouths and wants to cut back on food stamp programs? He stays there. It's an entitlement program, and poor kids aren't entitled to be fed. So you're happy then about Obama? No, I already told you. Obama is a false prophet, and so was Romney. There were other people running. You had Jill Stein, a doctor. You had Gary Johnson, the former governor of Colorado. Either one of those would have been far superior to the people we voted. And they came close. <laughs> That's not the point. Jesus only started out with a few people. That's right. You're it was right. conscience. You're right. right. We'll talk again. Godspeed. God bless Good you. Good meeting you.